All NVIDIA RTX graphics cards can do ray tracing. I mean, it's literally in the name. But should you actually do ray tracing on all NVIDIA RTX cards? Well, in order to find that out, I have the worst RTX graphics cards from each of the series. And we're going to perform a series of ray tracing tests. We'll start with some easy tests where the ray tracing isn't so intensive. And then we'll go down to path tracing, which as you might be able to guess, isn't very playable. Well, let's begin. So the first GPU we have is the MSI RTX 2060. This is the lowest card in the RTX 20 series and was released all the way back in 2019. This particular card features dual fans and like other 2060s, it has an 8-pin power connector due to its TDP being at 160 watts. For IO, we have one DVI, one HDMI and one DisplayPort. So a very good range of connectivity options. The specs of the MSI RTX 2060 are 1920 CUDA cores, 120 texture units, 6GB of GDDR6 memory, it has 30 ray tracing cores, and 240 tensor cores. Okay, so we're going to start with Cyberpunk at 1080p as it has very good ray tracing settings. We have the game on the Ray Tracing Ultra preset, but with DLSS turned off, and Path Tracing also turned off for obvious reasons. And we get an alright 18.8 FPS on average, with a 1% low of 11.5 and a 0.1% low of 10 FPS. You could probably get away with playing this, but I reckon it will probably end up driving you crazy with all the dips to 10 FPS. Overall, not too bad of a gaming experience, and you could turn down the ray tracing settings a little, but the game wouldn't look as good. Okay, let's now see our second graphics card, which is the MSI RTX 3050 6GB. This is the worst graphics card in the whole RTX desktop series by performance. And that makes sense when you hear the name 3050. Usually they only have the XX50 cards for laptops, but this actually comes as a full-size GPU for desktops. Funnily enough, Nvidia actually made two versions of the 3050. One has 8GB and the other has 6GB. Oh, and it also has a reduced memory bus of just 96 bits compared to the 128 of the 8GB version. This means the bandwidth is just 168GB per second, compared to the 224 of the 8GB version. The only real positive of the 6GB version over the 8GB is the fact that it uses just 70 watts, compared to the 130 watts of the 8GB version. This means that no external power connectors are required. Like I get that they would want to make this like a passively cooled and no external power connector card, but I'm not sure that the performance decrease even makes it a 3050 anymore. So our MSI RTX 3050 6GB is the low profile version that requires no external power. It has two HDMI ports and one display port. For specs, the MSI RTX 3050 6GB has 2304 CUDA cores. It has 72 texture units, 6GB of GDDR6 memory, which also happens to be the same as that of the 2060, 18 second gen RT cores and 72 tensor cores. Now let's plug the 3050 in and test out Cyberpunk again. So it seems this card does not have fan idle stop, but the fans aren't too loud anyway. So in Cyberpunk with Ray Tracing Ultra at 1080p, with the 3050, we got an average of 16.9 FPS. That's only slightly lower than the 2060, which is surprisingly not too bad. However, when we have a look at the 1% and 0.1% lows, it becomes not so good, let's say with 7.9 and 5.1 FPS respectively. So the 3050 can't really handle Cyberpunk at these settings. Finally, we have the RTX 4060, which is the lowest desktop RTX 40 series graphics card available. <laughs> Just look at the size difference between these two. This particular version is the colorful iGame RTX 4060, and it's the most powerful out of the three, and also the newest. It has three display ports and one HDMI, and is powered by this hidden 8-pin PCIe connector. The specs include 3072 CUDA cores, 96 texture units, 8GB of GDDR6, so that's the most out of all these three cards, 24 third-gen RT cores, and 96 tensor cores. So we have now seen the three worst graphics cards in each of the series, but by no means are these graphics cards the same in performance. So the RTX 3050 is the worst, then followed by the 2060 and then the 4060. The price also follows the same trend, with the 3050 and 2060 being quite similar in price, whereas the 4060 is about $120 more. Okay, so let's get this plugged in and test out Cyberpunk again. At the same settings, the 4060 gets 37.1 FPS on average, which is really decent for a budget card. 
It's a much better experience than that of the 3050 and 2060. The 1% and 0.1% lows are at 30.3 and 20.4 FPS respectively, which is also quite good, or at least a lot better than that of the 3050, and that's for sure. For the next game, we will try Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p, highest settings, and ray trace shadow quality on Ultra. As I've said before, I feel like in this game you can't even really tell when ray tracing is on. So let's put RTX to the test and have it just do it for us. Oh. <laughs> Before the 2060, we got a good average of 61.4 FPS and good 1% and 0.1% lows of 46.0 FPS and 38.8 FPS respectively. The 3050 also did pretty well with 39.7 FPS on average, a 1% low of 33.4 and a 0.1% low of 22.9 FPS. And finally, for the 4060, we got 96.8 FPS on average, with a 1% low of 81.5 and a 0.1% low of 76.6 FPS. So yeah, pretty much any of these cards can handle Ray Trace Tomb Raider Ultra, which I guess makes sense because the game is not too intensive and the ray tracing isn't that great, I think. Fours are next at extreme settings with ray tracing quality on extreme as well. And we got a respectable 50.7 FPS on average, with a 1% low of 37.9 and a 0.1% low of 14.8 FPS for the 2060. The average here is pretty good, but there were some occasional stutters. Similar things happen with the 3050, with 38.8 FPS on average, a 1% low of 31.2 and a 0.1% low of 12.9 FPS. So Forza uses quite a lot of VRAM, and these two cards, the 3050 and 2060 just have 6 gigabytes of video memory. That means they run out of VRAM at these settings, causing occasional stuttering. The 4060 with 8 gigabytes of VRAM was a lot better with 97 FPS on average. It got a 1% low of 72.2 and a 0.1% low of 58.4 FPS. It appears for Forza, the 2060 and 3050 can play the game with ray tracing at extreme, but really they need more VRAM. So I would say the 4060 is very playable at these settings. But the other two are a slightly less than ideal experience, but certainly not terrible. Spider-Man at the very high preset with ray trace reflections also at very high, and DLSS off, performed pretty well across the board. The 2060 got an average of 65.1 FPS, a 1% low of 42.6 and a 0.1% low of 4.9 FPS. I'm not really sure what happened with the 0.1% low here, but the game was pretty smooth and I didn't notice too much stuttering. The 3050 also followed this trend with an average of 60.4 FPS, a 1% low of 40.5 and a 0.1% low of 32.5 FPS. The 4060 performed the best as expected with 77.2 FPS, a 1% low of 47.7 and a 0.1% low of 33.9. I think any of these three cards offer a good experience in this game with ray tracing on very high. To get an idea of the abilities of these graphics cards, I ran 3D Mark Port Royale, which is the ray tracing benchmark. The 2060 got a score of 4173, which is not the best. The 3050 got a score of 2913, which, uh, to be honest, is pretty bad, and makes the 4060 score of 6087 look really good. Minecraft RTX is actually quite demanding and looks very, very good. Here we have the game on ray tracing 16 chunks with upscaling turned off at 1080p resolution. The 2060 achieved a reasonable 32.8 FPS on average. It got a 1% low of 24.2 and a 0.1% low of 22.3 FPS. The 3050 on the other hand really struggled here with just 25.9 FPS on average. The 1% low was just 16.8 and a 0.1% low was 11.1 .1 FPS, so it definitely wasn't the best experience. The 4060 did quite well with 50.6 FPS on average. It got a 1% low of 37.1 and a 0.1% low of 24.2 FPS. So the 2060 and 4060 can handle Minecraft RTX quite well, but I'd probably give it a miss on the 3050 unless you want to turn down the settings all the way. Finally, for path tracing, we have Portal RTX. The game just wouldn't start with the 2060, so for the 3050 we got 5.4 FPS on average. Yes, 5.4. And the 4060 we got 15.8 FPS on average. This game really needs powerful hardware to run it. I have to admit the game does look very good, so that in turn means that none of these low-end RTX cards can really play this game as path tracing is just too intensive. The 1% lows for the 3050 and 4060 respectively are 3.4 and 11.4 FPS. And that is very bad. I mean, if you're going to play this game and you had to choose between these two, you would choose the 4060, but even that performs terribly. So we have now seen the three lowest RTX cards in each of the series do ray tracing. 
Overall, I think you can do some ray tracing on these cards, but realistically, they're not powerful enough. The 3050, I would not recommend because it's just not powerful enough for anything and has low video memory. The 4060 is actually not too bad, but if you consider the cost, then it's just not really worth it because you can get 3060s and 3070s which will be cheaper and perform a little better or the same. Thanks for watching.